It's now this Friday lunchtime. It's the ITV News. Labour make gains, but the local elections aren't as damaging for the government as some Tories feared. There are key wins in London as Westminster, Wandsworth and Barnet are all taken by Labour. This is a massive turning point for the Labour Party. From the depths of 2019, we're back on track now for the general election. With many councils still counting their votes, it's bad. But just how bad for Boris Johnson? This has been a, uh, a, a tough night for Conservatives in, in some parts of the country and in other parts of the, of the country uh, we're actually moving forward. Meanwhile, Northern Ireland is braced for a huge moment, with Sinn Féin expected to become the Assembly's biggest party for the first time. And one other story this lunchtime, a last-minute rescue deal to save the McColls convenience stores fails, putting thousands of jobs at risk. This is the ITV Lunchtime News with Geraint Vincent. Good afternoon. What conclusions can we draw as the election results come in from across the United Kingdom this lunchtime? Well, Labour has recorded some famous wins in London, but elsewhere in England its progress has been modest. And for a Tory government now in its 13th year, trying to deal with a cost of living crisis and a Downing Street scandal, the results are nowhere near as bad as some had feared. We're still waiting for the results in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, which may yet be on the verge of a new political era. We'll have the latest from all corners of the UK in a moment. But first, here's our political reporter, Shihab Khan, with what we know so far. It's a moment that many in the Labour Party would have thought was impossible. <laughs> Winning councils that they haven't won in decades. It includes Barnet where the party won for the first time ever. And thanks as I look around to each and every one of you and all the teams we had out doing that really hard work across London, across the country. We've sent a message to the Prime Minister. Britain deserves better. They also picked up Westminster for the first time since 1964 and Wandsworth. Margaret Thatcher's favourite council which has been Conservative for 44 years. There were concerns about cost of living, there were concerns about people watching porn on, on, on their phones, there were concerns about Partygate indeed. Other seats through the night in Southampton, Worcester and Sunderland proved disappointing for the Conservatives, with some putting the blame on Partygate and the Prime Minister. Party Gates has kept some of our voters at home today. Our postal votes were fine, but people have not wanted to leave the house to vote for us at the polling station. The Prime Minister was at a school in Ricelip this morning, accepting that the results painted a difficult picture, but said there are domestic challenges for him to focus on. I mean, this has been a, uh, a, a tough night for Conservatives in, in some parts of the country, and in other parts of the, of the country, uh, we're actually moving forward. And I'm not going to pretend to you, Damien, that the, uh, the answers, were, you know, the, the, there isn't going to be uh, a, a difficult period as we come through. Uh, the aftershocks of COVID. There is. But what I'm going to tell you is that this government is absolutely determined to keep going. While Labour have done well in the capital, they haven't yet made the gains in the red wall seats they would have wanted to. In places like Nuneaton, they failed to make the impact they would need to win a general election. In Hartlepool too, where we asked if Keir Starmer was doing enough to win people over. I'm not happy with any of the parties. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, we all want Keir Starmer to do well, but he doesn't feel full of confidence. You know, I think Boris is doing more damage to the Conservative Party uh, than, than, uh, than any policies the Labour have got. But for some Conservative MPs after Partygate, these elections were a litmus test for the Prime Minister, an opportunity to see how the public respond. The message I and colleagues have heard on the doorsteps is that people are broadly happy with the direction of the government's policies, but they are dissatisfied with the Prime Minister's conduct. 
He said that he takes full responsibility for these election results, and I think he needs to demonstrate what that means in practice. Uh, but what exactly does that look like? Good idea well, the Conservative got, uh, Party's chairman was adamant that the answer is Boris Johnson staying in number 10. When you think about the backdrop against which these elections were fought, when you think about where we are in the electoral cycle, I think you just need to have that kind of context. I think if you, on the question of the, the Prime Minister's leadership, I think you have to also look at the big successes he's had, whether that is getting Brexit done, whether it's the fastest vaccine rollout programme in Europe. So far, it is the Liberal Democrats who have gained the most council seats, 66 at the moment, and the Greens too have had a good set of results. The challenge will be to translate that into the general election, where the smaller parties tend to have less success. You see, the Liberal Democrats are winning across the country again. Yes, we won here in Wimbledon. Yeah. But didn't we do well across other parts of London? And then in Tory heartlands, West Oxfordshire, Cameron's backyard. We took Hull off the Labour Party. We are winning across the country again. Votes are still being counted and more results are coming in. But for now, Labour will continue to celebrate their gains in London, while the Conservatives will be comforted by their opponents having made minimal gains in those crucial red wall seats so far. Chihab Khan, ITV News, Westminster. So that is the picture so far, but there are still millions of votes to be counted with results expected throughout this afternoon and into tomorrow. Well, let's find out what's still to come because the picture is very different in different parts of the UK. We've got correspondents in all four nations this lunchtime, starting with our deputy political editor Anushka Astana with the picture in England. Anushka, what are you expecting this afternoon? Well, one of the things that you've always got to remember in local elections is that the last results-wise over a couple of days, Labour last year made the mistake of losing control of the narrative early on, and they are not doing this this time. Of course, they've had the positive results in London. But so far in the red wall, a mixed picture and some important councils coming this afternoon, Bury, Hindburn and Wakefield. Remember where they've got a by-election coming up. We're going to have to look very closely at them to look at what the picture looks like. And then in southern England as well, what is often known as the blue wall, areas where Tories are dug in. Most of their MPs are down south and they're going to be looking at that very, very closely. We've got Worthing coming in, which could go to Labour control. But one I really think is worth watching out for is Somerset Council. It's a big new council. It was Conservative control, but the Lib Dems very hopeful that they could take control of it. That would worry a lot of Conservative MPs. OK, thanks, Anushka. Louise Scott is at a count in Glasgow. Louise, Labour have made gains in London. Are they making any progress in Scotland? They're making gains already up nine me. They're happy with how things are going so far. Not sure whether they will be able to oust SNP who took over Glasgow here in 2017. But the council leader, Susan Aitken, she retains her ward seat. Interestingly, however, she came second behind the Greens. She says it's too early to know whether her position as leader is safe as of Scotland's largest local authority. Conservatives not having a good day in Scotland. They are already down 20 seats. The counting went underway here in Glasgow around 9am this morning. We're expecting it to come to inclusion around 5pm and in Scotland it's a single transferable voting system where voters rank candidates and so no council generally has overall control, forcing parties into a coalition. So discussions likely in the coming days, which parties that's between, we should know later this evening. Thank you, Louise. Uh, Wales reporter Rhys Williams is in Cardiff. Rhys, they've been counting all morning. What are the early signs? Yes, Kieran, counting only started this morning, but there are early indications. The Conservatives have a majority in only one of Wales' 22 councils, and that's Monmouthshire. Labour say it could be close, but a Tory source tells me they're confident they'll hold on. The leader of that council has been openly critical of Boris Johnson for what it's worth. That Tory source, though, is less confident elsewhere in Wales, including in the north where, northeast of Wales, uh, that classic red wall area. The three constituencies that make up Denbyshire Council, for example, 
all fell to the Conservatives in the 2019 general election. But Labour say it's seeing early encouraging results there and a Tory source agrees with that assessment. Plaid Cymru are hoping to make, uh, say they think they will make gains in their Gwynedd uh, Council majority. But there's no obvious signs of any major breakthrough elsewhere. And I haven't mentioned the independents yet, Geraint, which are very significant here in Wales, as they're in control in some form or another of nearly 50% of Wales' councils, which makes this election so uh, tricky to analyse on a UK-wide or even a Wales-wide level. OK, Rhys, many thanks. Voting in Northern Ireland has been underway since 9am. Sinn Féin has been forecast to become the biggest party there. Peter Smith is at the count where their leader is standing. Peter... It might be on the brink of momentous change where you are. Seismic change, Geraint. And Michelle O'Neill, the leader of Sinn Féin, has just arrived. She's expected to win and she's expected to be seeing her party win in Northern Ireland for the first time in this country's history. Now, this is a party that is ostensibly an Irish Republican, Irish Nationalist Party that stands for Northern Ireland being separate from the United Kingdom and creating a united Ireland. So the fact that they're in position to take you know, the biggest share of the vote in Northern Ireland and for Michelle O'Neill to be First Minister is a huge moment and tells you about the trajectory of politics in this country and also about the decline of unionism here. And this election will be marked as much by the, the, the success of Sinn Féin as the complete decimation of the vote from the DUP. They are being punished because of the results of Brexit. DUP, you'll remember, propped up Theresa May's government. They were rewarded by Boris Johnson with a protocol that ultimately leaves Northern Ireland cut off from the rest of the UK totally and to their supporters. So while the headlines will be about Sinn Féin's success, DUP are saying they will not go into government and this could be the start of Northern Ireland's next political crisis. All right, Peter, thanks. Well, we're going to go back now to Anushka, who's got some breaking news, because Durham police have just confirmed they are to investigate Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer over allegations that he broke lockdown rules in April last year by drinking beer with colleagues. Anushka, that gives today a slightly different mood, doesn't it? Yeah, bad news for Labour. They have always denied doing anything wrong here and they are continuing to deny it today. But Durham Police, who previously said there's nothing to investigate here, are now telling us that they have significant new information. This was a constituency event. Keir Starmer was at the City of Durham MP's office. They were doing an online event to try and get support and they stopped to eat. And you'll remember that picture of him through the window drinking beer. Um, the Conservatives have pushed very hard on this, particularly a local MP, Richard Holden. And I think that's because they see this as equivalent to when Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak stopped between work meetings to celebrate Boris Johnson's birthday. They ate cake famously. And that event led to a police fine for the Prime Minister, for the Chancellor. Keir Starmer said they should resign over that. Now he's facing his own investigation. Thank you. Right, we've got three wise people in the studio now. Two professors, Jane Green and Colin Rawlings, who are the ITV News election analysts, and, of course, our political editor, Robert Peston. Well, I want to get a headline take from all of you first on the results so far. Colin. Well, of course, the voters didn't know about the Durham police when they went to the polls yesterday. And although these are local elections, we always tend to look at the national picture. And frankly, Labour has not done well enough, especially at this stage in the Parliament, to suggest they're on course to winning a clear majority at a general election. On the other hand, the Conservatives themselves can't be complacent. They've fallen back quite sharply from last year when they did very well in the local elections. And not only have they lost some seats to Labour, and I think we'll see more of that when Wales and Scotland come in later, Later, but they've also been losing seats to the Liberal Democrats and Greens in other places too. Jane. Yeah, so it's really interesting because we've been focusing on the geography of electoral support over recent elections where Labour had lost seats in the north of England. So the question with these elections was, is this going to kind of unravel? Are we going to see a different picture? And what we've seen is instead of Labour taking the lion's share of votes and seats from the Conservatives in the north of England, we're actually seeing the Liberal Democrats, the Greens, Independents also chipping away at the Conservative vote. So we're seeing a kind of anti-Conservative vote that spread across different political parties, not just going to the Labour Party, except in London, where Labour's had a much stronger result. So really interesting, another part of that geographical divide again. Mm. Robert. So this is a weird set of elections where it seems to me both leaders of the main parties can both take some comfort but also be slightly anxious. And what do I mean by that? Uh, you know, plainly for Labour, 
uh, taking symbolically important seats in London, you know, Westminster, uh, Barnet uh, and Wandsworth, hugely significant. And as uh, Jane has just said, reinforcing Labour's extraordinary stronghold on sort of university graduate voters, younger voters, particularly in the south of England, but not making the progress, as Colin says, that they need to make in the north to be confident of winning the next election. But for, for, for Boris Johnson, facing, some would say, the worst conditions for any government to fight any kind of election, a cost-of-living crisis where he's accused of not doing uh, enough, on the one hand, all these uh, charges that he broke his own lockdown rules day after day after day, and yet his vote hasn't collapsed uh, in those really important seats which used to be called the Red Wall in the Midlands and North. So both, to an extent, can take some comfort out of that, but neither doing well enough to be confident for the next election. OK, well, as we've seen, the picture is different in different parts of the UK. Let's hear from some of the voters who've helped shape the results so far. Labour have done very well in London, as we've been talking about. Let's hear from some people in Wandsworth, where Labour took control from the Tories. There was no other way to vote. This government has shown us that they do not care for the people, are not prepared to listen to us, and we've just seen scandal after scandal. I prefer to vote for Labour because the country needs Labour at the moment. Why? A lot of things, actually. Everything is going higher. Everything is going up. I actually voted Conservative um, because Wandsworth, and Wandsworth's always been Conservative as long as I've been here. And ev everybody enjoys the low council tax. Well, Colin, what's the significance for you of these results in London? Well, for a long time now, the cliché has rather been that London is another country. <laughs> and these elections reinforce it. And remember, too, that there are more seats in London than there are in Scotland. We thought London had reached a historic high. Labour in London had reached a historic high in 2018. They almost looked as if it was a saturation point. But no, these three significant councils that Robert was talking about, and he's right. What Labour want is more parts of the country to look like London with a younger, more highly educated, ethnically diverse electorate. That's where they do best these days, it seems. OK, well, it's a different picture outside London, of course. Hartlepool used to be firmly held by Labour, but last night it was the Conservatives who made gains. Here's what people there told us. I think Labour were in power for far too long in Hartlepool. I think it needs a change. Which one? I don't know. Do you think Labour are doing enough to win it back at the next election? Uh, probably not, no. I think, they've, I think they've blown it anyway. I don't think it, not, either of them are doing enough to either way. That's my own personal They're not winning point. the argument, no. with the you? No. Jane, what are we learning about the famous Red Wall, then? Yeah, so the Red Wall is famous because it was Labour heartlands, places in the country that we thought, or, you know, many thought, would never, ever fall to the Conservatives. But also, these were parts of the country where the Leave vote was particularly high. And what we're seeing in the results is that the Conservatives are still doing that bit better in those Leave areas, and Labour's tending to do better where it is doing better in more Remain areas, as are the Liberal Democrats as well. There are some signs, glimmers of hope for the Labour Party that they'll be pointing to within parts of the Red Wall or the north of England and the Midlands, um, but it's not a universal picture. It's nothing near the kind of support that they would be hoping for if they could be really confident in winning back the Red Wall. OK, Robert, what does all this mean for the future of Boris Johnson, then? So, to be clear, these results uh, will not determine in and of themselves whether he stays or whether he goes. Talking to Tory MPs today, uh, they say they're simply not bad enough for them to feel they want to force him out immediately, but there is still quite a lot of potentially very bad news for him personally coming down the track. There could be more fines for other parties that he attended in Downing Street. We've still got to get Sue Gray. That's the Cabinet Office official's report into uh, all those breaches of COVID rules. That's yet to be published. It's going to be at the very best for him, very embarrassing for him. And then we've got this parliamentary inquiry into whether he lied to Parliament. Uh, so I have to say, there are many Tory MPs who say to me they still don't think he's going to lead them into the next election, but the crisis is deferred for him, uh, you know, rather than tomorrow, as it were. And just a quick word yeah. on what Labour have got to do if they're going to win the next... So I do, I do think that for Keir Starmer, this is a both a good and a bad day. We haven't talked about Barnett. He made it a personal project to root anti-Semitism out of the Labour Party, and there's a big Jewish community in Barnet. He won Barnet, and I think, to an extent, he's put the taint of anti-Semitism um, in the Labour Party behind him. But the fact that the police are now investigating, uh, you know, his beer and curry in... 
Durham is very embarrassing for him. He did call on the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, to resign when Rishi Sunak simply stumbled into that birthday party. He, you know, if he now gets fined, he will find it very difficult to explain why he's not resigning. Robert, Jane and Colin, many thanks. In other news this lunchtime, the newsagent chain McColl's has gone bust, putting 16,000 jobs at risk. The Morrison's supermarket chain has tabled a last-minute rescue deal, but it appears to have come too late. Neil Connery is outside a store in Brentwood in Essex. Neil, what chance is there that McColl's might be saved now? Well, this news breaking in the last half hour. They had warned last night that they could go into administration unless they could find future sources of funding. Uh, the companies, you say, 1,100 stores in the UK employing something like 16,000 people. So they will be concerned this lunchtime what it means for them and their jobs. Morrison's had proposed this last minute rescue deal. The chain already has a partnership with McColl's, which operates more than 200 convenience stores. And it's understood that Morrison's improved offer included taking on pension commitments and 170 million million pounds in debt. We've had no reaction so far from Morrison's or McColl's to what has happened here uh, this lunchtime, but clearly this is not the news or the outcome that their staff uh, would have been hoping for. We'll just have to wait and see what it means in terms of possible restructuring of the company or if somebody else can come along and try and take the business. OK, Neil, many thanks. House prices have hit a new high, with the average cost rising by more than £3,000 last month. It's the 10th month in a row that prices have risen, but Halifax warns that the growth is expected to slow down, with interest rates rising and inflation squeezing household budgets. The TV chef Dave Myers, best known as one half of the Hairy Bikers, has re revealed he's having chemotherapy. The 64-year-old from Lancashire told listeners to his podcast that this year will be a bit of a write-off for the pair, but he is ready to crack on with his cancer treatment. And parts of the country are expected to be hotter than Mallorca today. The Met Office says that high temperatures should last for several days, well above average for this time of year. And that is all from us so far this lunchtime. But don't forget, you can get much more on the local elections on our website as results come in this afternoon. That is at itv.com slash news. Charlie White will be here with the evening news at 6.30. But from everyone here, bye-bye. Enjoy your afternoon. Everywhere will be lovely and warm today. You might